This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use the discount code MACVOICES. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the Talk of the Mac community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we have another Take Control author. Actually, this time, I believe he's a first-time Take Control author, but not a first-time Mac Voices guest, Mr. Josh Centers. He is the author of Take Control of Apple TV, a book that you probably want to get because the Apple TV is so hot right now. Josh, it's great to have you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on, Chuck. Josh, this Take Control book was a little bit different because it was, I think, the second book that was kind of written in series for Tidbits readers and then is going to be assembled and maybe tweaked a little bit into a a real book. Um, How how did you feel about taking that approach to it? Oh, I was for it from the start. In fact, when I first thought of the idea, I thought this would make a perfect stream book because – uh, you know, one of the things with the Apple TV is things are always changing, right? Like the the iOS apps are changing, and and but even before I started writing, I start I came up with the idea and started outlining it before iOS seven came out. So I knew things were going to change as I was writing it. So uh, I was definitely I was all for the streaming. Also, just for the fact that some of the things I cover in the book are extremely complicated, like video transcoding that sort of thing, and I wanted the reader input, you know, because a lot of times people think. You know, uh, you never know who's going to come up with a better idea than what you have, you know, even if you think you know what you're doing. And well, also, plus, I wanted, you know, I thought I knew what people wanted in the book, but I wasn't entirely sure. So I got some great ideas from readers. Um, One good example is in the final chapter, I have a section about if you're overseas and want to access American content, like let's say you want to get Netflix, had a lot of requests for that. So I sat down, figured out how to do that, put it in the book. Um, so, and by the way, if you're a Tidbits member and you've already read the book, you think, oh, I, didn't, I don't want to buy the, you know, the actual book. Really what you're getting with the PDF that you purchase, you're actually getting almost like a second edition. Technically, it's the first edition, but I've made so many revisions to it and added so many things to it that it's it, a lot of ways, yeah, it's like a whole new book. That's I, I would be surprised, frankly, Josh, if it wasn't, because I would think that the feedback you get, that's the whole idea. R- write a chapter that is useful, but then get some feedback from some folks and add it in and enhance it a bit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, absolutely. So let's let's kind of take it from the top. What kind of things do you cover in the in the Apple TV book? Ah, uh, well, um, so I start off telling you how to set the thing up, right? Because I mean, otherwise it's just a fancy paperweight. And then I go on to uh, tell you about the how to use the remote control. Which there's actually three, at least three ways to control an Apple TV. You have the built-in Apple remote. I have one of these right here. A uh, little. Very easy to lose in the couch cushions. Um, then you can also control it with a uh, iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch with the remote app. And also, the third way to control it is with a Bluetooth keyboard, such as this one right here. Um, so I tell you how to set all three of those up. I tell you how to c- control your Apple TV no matter what. Another thing, a lot of people don't know this, but you can actually program any infrared remote control to work with your apple tv a lot of people hate the apple remote i personally love it uh, i love the simplicity i love the feel a lot of people don't like it so you can take any kind of remote like uh, this one right here and you can actually program it to work with your apple tv and a little secret you can actually add more functions than this controller gives you um so that's one little tip from the book so after i tell you how to control your apple tv i list all the content options that are currently available and uh, hopefully at some point apple have an app store for this thing so that chapter won't even be necessary because <laughs> you know you wouldn't write an iphone book and write about all the apps on the iphone right um then we go on to more advanced things like um there's an entire chapter about movies and video and frankly and, you know, when I wrote it, I thought, this is the cha- this entire chapter makes the book worthwhile. And after we published a chapter in Tidbits, I heard that from a lot of people. They said, wow, just this one chapter alone makes it worthwhile because I tell you all the, the uh, ways to control your video, like all the remote shortcuts you may not be aware of, how to turn certain things on and off, how to customize your subtitles. Um, a lot of stuff about subtitles in the book. I, uh, I'm big on, access- on accessibility. Um, and big thing in the book is I tell you – 
in that chapter is I tell you how to rip your DVDs and your Blu-rays to work perfectly on your Apple TV. So if you have uh, a ton of these discs taking up space in your house, yeah, guess what? You, if you have a big enough hard drive, you can rip them and put them on your, you know, store them on your hard drive, you know, play them on your Apple TV. Stick those old discs in the attic. You know, they don't take up space anymore. It's fantastic. Um, after that, we cover audio. And um, one of my favorite uses for the Apple TV is as an audio device. Um, it's, our, it's effectively our home stereo because I have the Apple TV hooked up via an optical cable to our receiver. And then, you know, got the big speakers hooked up to the home theater receiver. And... Here's the cool thing about the Apple TV, what makes it a great audio device, is that um, you can airplay any audio from your iPhone to the Apple TV. When you do that, though, it turns the Apple TV on. So you don't have to you know, mess with anything. You, just, you know, The Apple TV's off, you're in the other room, you airplay your, uh, your music to the Apple TV, give it a second to boot up, and you'll hear it over your speakers. So it's a, it's a, it's a cheaper alternative to the Sonos, a more flexible alternative, plus... Um, for us, it acts as a home audio system. So, yeah, in that regard, it's fantastic. So I teach you about some of the different things you can do there. Like, for instance, iTunes lets you uh, beam uh, multiple AirPlay signals so you can fill your entire house with audio, like one of those expensive Sonos systems. Um, then from there, we go on to... Uh, Different, talking about different things. Like I talk about using the Apple TV for business and education. My wife's a high school teacher, and she actually bought an Apple TV for her classroom. So I teach you how to, you know, about different adapters you might need for different uh, display setups. Uh, also, uh, how to do keynote presentations on the Apple TV. How to um, you know do Skype. Con you can do Skype conferences. You can use AirPlay to do that. You can also there there are apps where you can uh, show documents directly on uh, your screen with the Apple TV. You can AirPlay it over, and they have um, I forget what they're called, but there's these projectors with a camera in them, and they cost several hundred dollars. Well, you know, teachers don't have to buy those now because you know almost every teacher I know has an iPad, iPhone. You just get that. You, you get a you get a little cheap app that actually lets you draw on the screen and show the camera on the Apple TV. And you just aim at the document, so, um, so it can save you a lot of money in that way. Then uh, that kind of get in the silly zone. I talk about games that work on the Apple TV that you can AirPlay. Uh, some of them work really well, and some of them are actually designed so that. When you airplay the game to the Apple TV, the the iPad or iPhone actually becomes a controller. Like the the screen actually changes to have like pedals or to have some other kind of control on it, which is really cool. Then the final chapter, I I kind of get into the hacky stuff. Um, it's uh, I tell you how to set up Plex. I tell you how to uh, you know access content from other countries you normally wouldn't be able to, and I tell you how to use uh, Elgato uh, HD TV, Elgato iTV HD. Sorry, uh, to record uh, cable and broadcast content to iTunes and then play it on your Apple TV. So you can use your Apple TV as something of a DVR. I have to tell you, Josh, as I was watching you write this on Tidbits, I learned a lot of things. I, the, the Apple TV, I think, is seductively simple mm -hmm. at its top level. And you kind of don't realize or forget or maybe don't go down be below that level because you get suckered into, uh, wow, this, here's this movie on, on the iTunes store and you know I'll watch it now. Mm -hmm. And then you forget about everything that you, you've, you're talking about there. There's mm -hmm. so many applications, and I love the part about the teachers. I think that's brilliant because that's a whole – class and and a class of users unto themselves mm -hmm. that maybe they haven't realized what the apple tv is capable of in conjunction with their iphone or their ipod mm -hmm. yeah the, and that's one of the things about the apple tv it's it's such a brilliant device because almost anyone can use it it's extremely simple has one of the simplest remotes i've ever seen yet it holds so much power and really the secret to it is airplay um it, AirPlay is one of the most amazing things ever, um, in my opinion. And for that reason, I think the I think the Apple TV, in some ways, is Apple's most important device because the app because it's cheap, right? Anyone can buy an Apple TV, but once you get it, you'll say, "Hey, I can beam this to it. I can beam that to it. I can do this." And it, it's it sucks you into it, and also it. It locks you in, right? Because when you get the Apple TV, you start buying iTunes stuff, and then <laughs> and, you know everything's linked up through iTunes now. And so, ah, oh, darn, I, you know, like it, 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 it's like a lifestyle device. Because when you get the Apple TV, it's like the Apple ecosystem becomes a huge part, part uh, a huge part or a bigger part of your life than it was before. Um, 
and there's there's a lot of competitors now. You know, there's the there's the Chromecast, which I have one. I actually bought one when they were first announced because when I first saw, I'm like, darn, that's that's gonna kill my book. It's thirty five dollars, but but no, it's it's not as powerful. Um, like for instance, you can. Well, they just now released an API. So before it was actually more closed than than AirPlay because anyone on iOS can create an AirPlay app, but uh, Google had very strictly limited what you could do with the Chromecast till just the other day, and even then, it doesn't have the horsepower to do a lot of things you can do with the Apple TV. Like I tried uh, Chromecasting a game over actually. Um, it's uh, it was one of Google's own test games for HTML5. And, yeah, yeah, just very laggy. doesn't work well. You try Chromecasting a Chrome tab and looks bad. You know, and it doesn't work so great with iOS either because um, you, like, I have a Nexus 7. works great with that, obviously. But there are, like, for instance, Google uh, Play Music on iOS. You know, I, I tested that with a Chromecast. And you know, usually when you when you exit the when you stop casting, the app goes off your screen, right? That's the idea with the Chromecast. It didn't. I don't know if they fixed it since. I haven't played with it since. But yeah, I had to go like, open YouTube and Chromecast that, and then unChromecast it. So just to you know, if you don't have much to spend on a device, you know, if thirty five dollars is your upper limit, Chromecast is great um, in a lot of ways. And we have one set up in our bedroom, but. Um, you know the Apple T. You know, and then you have the Roku. A lot of people love the Roku, and it's it's a good device. Um, and in some ways, it's more open, right? Because they have all the different apps you can get on it. But in some ways, it's more closed. Because okay, here's an example for you. So the Super Bowl was last Sunday, right? And I don't know if you're a football guy, Chuck, but I am at least you know during the playoffs um, when I have time to watch it. And so CBS streamed the game for free on their website, right? But not on the Apple TV, not on the Roku. Ah, but you know what? If you have the Apple TV, you have a Macintosh, you can AirPlay Mirror the game to your Apple TV, and it looks great. looks just like it would, would on your Mac. If you try to you know, Chromecast that, it'd be choppy and low resolution and you know, not so great. No, nah, but um, with the, the Apple TV allows you to put anything on your TV screen and, and do it well. And that's one of the things that makes it so amazing. And if if you already have an iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, Macintosh, you know, if you already in the, have your toe in the Apple ecosystem, you gotta have an Apple TV. It it to, it totally opens up the whole experience. It it takes it to a whole other level. And I think Apple must agree with you, Josh, because they recently, we've all been set using the phrase promoted, promoted the Apple TV in the App Store to f- compete, or not compete, but be on the same standing with the Macs and the the iPads and all. So you have to wonder if even bigger changes aren't coming. I, I, I really like the, the point you made about the remote. Um, I, I still think that's one of the strongest things about the Apple TV, because you give it you give a remote to so many people i mean look i'm like you i've got remotes that have you know 50 buttons on mm-hmm. on my coffee table but how many times do i use those 50 buttons and how many times do i have to go and search mm-hmm. for what it is i'm trying to accomplish mm-hmm. the apple tv has it right up there on the screen in big letters so you you know you're not squinting you're not hunting you just you know exactly what you're getting you've only got what one two three four, what eight buttons Am I doing that right? Well, uh, depends <laughs> how you count them. And I had a pr- I had a problem uh, in the book with this because see, I actually I count this uh, as one button. I call this okay. the directional ring. Yeah, it's got you know one, two, three, four positions on it. But I mean, really, it's just one button. So one, two, three, four. I, I say it's a four button remote. Okay. And, it, and if you count four directions on the directional ring, it's eight. Yeah. That, so that's what, uh, I, was, what you know, I was doing. So you know, either way you want to go, it do- doesn't really matter. But yeah. So you, you're not going to find a remote more simple than that. I mean, this <laughs> this is about as simple as a typical remote gets, right? Yeah, and that's 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 overkill for so many people, you mm-hmm. know, and especially some older people who you know grew up with you know a, literally a four button remote, mm-hmm. channel up, channel down, volume up, volume down, maybe mm-hmm. a mute button, so, power, you know, yeah, yeah, you, power, yeah. How much how much more do you need? Like, there's some. Like, if I can go on a rant here, like, do you have Comcast? Because most people seem yes. to have Comcast. Okay, 
What's with the remotes? I can't figure out half the things on the remote do. It's like, okay, th- this is uh, like this one has a square root sign on it, and this this one has a multiply sign. Is this a calculator? <laughs> I, I don't know what this thing is. Like so many buttons in the thing, and then um, I, I don't have a DVR with my current setup, but I had one before, and they did they didn't have a way to skip commercials. They had cut that out of the remote. It was built into the box, so I had to like go and find a way to hack it into one of the unused buttons. On the remote, <laughs> like, um, yeah, just a, just yeah. a mess. The, the yeah. remotes in particular are, are really bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, Josh, another thing though that I, I I found it true for me, the Apple TV is somewhat addictive. Once you get mm. one, and like you say, once you step into that infrastructure where you're starting to beam things from your phone, mirror mm-hmm. them for the Mac, which was a was a great addition because it opened up so many more things. Um, I, I think now. Yeah, I think I have an Apple TV on every screen in my house. And, mm. you know, do I use them all the time? Not all the time, but a large part of the time because I'm sick of, of network TV. I, I want to watch what I want to watch when I want to watch it. Mm-hmm. And half of it is coming, well, more than half is coming off the Internet now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the philosophies uh, behind the book is that you don't need anything else. I mean, if you have an Apple TV you can really get by with just that. I mean, for everything. That's why I had a chapter about gaming because I wanted to prove that you know, yeah, it's not a hardcore gaming device, but you can uh, you can uh, use it for you know just about anything. So with the um, you know we got the Apple TV, like it totally changed our living room experience because you know before my wife always struggled with with my setup. You know, I, I'm sure every geek. Can relate to this, right? Like you set up the you set up the screen with the receiver and the you know and the the PS3 or whatever it is, and you have to leave an instruction sheet for everybody, right? Like, okay, switch the TV to input one, and then and then if you, you change you change the the uh, the receiver to Xbox, uh, it's it's for the PS3, but I just it's labeled Xbox, okay? So so if you're on input one, and then you, you pick up this remote, you pick up this remote, you, you change that to Xbox. Okay, and then uh, uh, make sure you turn the sub. You know, it's it's so confusing and it's so um, it's so insane. So when we got the Apple TV, it started being all we used because I didn't have to tell her anything. You know, I just I set all the inputs to the Apple TV, and then she just turned on the TV and the, she turned the Apple TV on, and she'd watch stuff. That's all, I, I didn't have to leave an instruction sheet. I didn't have to leave a note. She just got it. And, and one of the cool things, this is something else I want to mention. Speaking of receivers, like I'm sure you've set, you've set up home audio receivers, right, Chuck? Oh, all the oh, wires and oh, all this sure. stuff. The Apple TV, you don't even need one if you don't want to. Because one of the cool things about the Apple TV is that not only does it accept AirPlay input, it also sends AirPlay output. So if you have AirPlay speakers, you can uh, use those with your Apple TV. If you have an AirPort Express, you can connect speakers to that and then... It, it, you can control everything through the Apple TV. Not, you don't need any wires. It's it's really cool. Yeah, and and you're right. I think everybody here that's watching this can probably relate to that. Boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, kids, whatever. You, you get the system just the way you want it, and then mm-hmm. you have to teach them how to operate it. And three days later, they still can't figure it out. <laughs> or, you can, or you come in one day and everything's on the wrong inputs, and the sounds all messed up, and yep. it's, all, it's all coming out the TV. That's what always happens to me. Is like come in the, t- the little tiny TV speakers are turned all the way up. And <laughs> <laughs> yep, sounds real familiar. Real, real familiar. Yeah. Um. So an, another thing I wanted to make sure I touched on it, probably a little bit of out, of out of order. You mentioned that the last chapter gets a little hacky. Are we talking about jailbreaking the I, the Apple TV, or are we talking about just doing things with it maybe that they weren't intended to be used that way? You, you know, when I first thought of the chapter, the main thing I thought was jailbreaking. Unfortunately, I don't cover that in the book. And the reason why is Good. because there isn't a – there isn't a jailbreak for the current system software of the Apple TV. Um, that's one of the things that gets kind of complicated because some people say only the the second generation Apple TV can be jailbroken, which it, it can be. It's the only one that can do an untethered jailbreak. So that means that uh, untethered means you can turn it off and boot it back up, and it's just fine, right? So, and, and for that reason, uh, the second generation Apple TV goes for a lot of money on eBay. Actually, I I have one in my house. Uh, I may put up on eBay one of these days because I, I I'm not sure if I'll ever jailbreak it. But um, there are jailbreaks 
or at least were for the, for the third generation Apple TV, but they were untethered. So you would have to connect. You know, every time you want to boot up your Apple TV, you have to connect it to your computer and, and do some uh, weird voodoo stuff with it to get it to boot. Um, so so maybe not very practical. So just, just for a lot of reasons, uh, I decided covering the jailbreak wasn't worth it. And, and Apple is so good at cracking down on those things that even if they had... Um, a good solid jailbreak. Who knows how long it would have lasted before Apple updated over it. I will tell you, I will tell you something cool, though, um, I tell you about in the last chapter is that, you know, I mentioned Plex earlier. Well, there's this really cool hack called Plex Connect. And what it does is it you reroute your Apple TV's internet connection through through a Mac or, you know, through a Plex server of some kind. It can be Linux or Windows or whatever, whatever you got laying around, uh, or even an NAS like Drobo and uh, Synology. They support Plex as well. So anyway, point being, you route your Apple TV, its internet connection, through a Plex server, and then you hijack the Trailers app. And the way you do that is you you create a phony SSL certificate and... and uh, so you con it. You 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 you, uh, you con the DNS in the Apple TV to make it think it's the Trailers app is connecting to Apple.com. In fact, it's connecting to your Plex server, and then it will serve this software up to your Apple TV. So not a jailbreak, but but it's a pretty clever hack. <laughs> And and listen, folks, don't you know go crazy with what Josh just said. He he walks you through each you know each step of yes. it. It's not that bad, but you're right. You're just doing getting the Apple TV to do something it was not necessarily designed to do, but it works. Right. And and, and, I, and I love that. I love that fact. I love the fact that you did that without forcing me to jailbreak. Go through for a lot of people what is stress because you know they hear about. Well, I might brick my device. Well, nobody wants to brick an, an Apple TV they just spent a hundred bucks on, mm-hmm. and, you know, and have it be that expensive paperweight you talked about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and to keep from scaring anybody, that that's all. All the crazy hacky stuff is compressed in the last chapter, and I have a lot of warnings up front. So, you know, there, there's you know about 180 pages of content that isn't that chapter. So. Uh, it, it's a longer chapter, but there, there's plenty of stuff outside that. And it's, it's a book that everyone can get some use out of. This edition of Mac Voices is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use the discount code MACVOICES. I get a lot of emails from people who say they are considering Squarespace, but wonder if it's for them. After all, they aren't website builders. They have other agendas, interests, and priorities. So who is Squarespace for? The shortlist promoted by Squarespace includes shops, photographers, bloggers, artists, restaurants, musicians, and weddings. But that's a shortlist. Everyone needs a website, or two, or more. Squarespace is also for them, maybe even more for them. Event organizers who need a fully featured website that is easily updated and can collect money for tickets or registrations via e-commerce. Businesses who need a presence on the web and maybe an e-commerce presence, or maybe not. Either way, they need to communicate their message of products and services, but don't want to take a lot of time away from their primary activities. Doctors and dentists who want patients to know about the care they deliver especially in this time of healthcare upheaval. Manufacturers who can make one thing out of another and want to attract new clients. Lawyers who need to let you know the focus of their practices. Video producers, because like photographers, they need to let potential clients see their work. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Everyone needs a website. Everyone needs a Squarespace website. That's why you need to go and try it for yourself. Sign up for a 14-day free trial now at squarespace.com. You get access to the full power of Squarespace, not some watered-down, feature-crippled version. So when you take that first 14 days to build your site, you are really building your site, not some test version that you'll have to rebuild later. When you decide that you want to keep that site, you can get 10% off your order, even if it's for the full year's service, with the free domain name included, by using the code MACVOICES. That's a deal on the best website hosting and creation tool going. And that's why you should choose Squarespace. Again, take 10% off your Squarespace order with the code MACVOICES. 
Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this edition of Mac Voices. Josh, I'm, I'm really curious, with a, a device like the Apple TV, did you feel compelled to really take it from the ground up, like, okay, this is the Apple TV, and here's how you set it up and all that? <laughs> or did, did, were you, would, would you have been more comfortable with making certain assumptions that a user knows? And that, cause that's, oh. a, that's a tough choice for an author. Oh, that's a, that's a good question. Do, 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 I can't tell you how many times I had to reset and restart my Apple TV, because I, I, I probably set it up from scratch about 30 times um no joke because there's so many there's so many ways to set up an apple tv i wanted to test them all like for instance um when, when you first plug in an apple tv it gives you a lot of options right um you can connect a bluetooth keyboard and set it up with that which is cool you can uh turn voiceover on so if you're blind oh this is a cool thing if any of you out there are visually impaired the apple tv is great in terms of accessibility i mean you don't you, you don't have to be able to see to operate it, which is really cool. But um, you can turn on voiceover, and it'll guide you through the entire thing. I'll talk about that. Um, and one of the awesome things um, in iOS 7, automatic setup. If you have an iOS 7, uh, a newer iOS 7 device, like an, uh, I think it's an iPhone 5 or above or iPad, iPad 3 or 4 or above, don't remember exactly which models it supports. But long story short, you can connect your phone or you don't have to connect it. You just touch your phone to the Apple TV, and it will add your Wi-Fi login. It will add your iTunes login. Um, all that, you know, not everything. It doesn't add, like, Netflix and stuff. But, boy, it saves a lot of time in your setup. You don't have to enter your Wi-Fi password. Because that's one of the hardest things about setting it up and <laughs> drove me insane is that they, they expect you to enter your long Wi-Fi password with the little rinky-dink Apple remote, which takes all day. Um, and for that reason, actually, I highly recommend you're setting up Apple TV up for the first time. If you can't do the automatic setup, please Get a Bluetooth keyboard, borrow one from a Mac if you have to, borrow one from a friend, pair it w with uh, the Apple TV. That'll make things so much easier. Yeah, I, I agree completely. But, you know, it's been a while this since I actually set an Apple TV up. Mm. Um, does it let you connect more than one of the remote devices at once? Yes, you can... Um I mean, yeah, you can have the app going and a keyboard connected and the app and the Apple remote. And I guess you can program another remote. I mean, I, I don't. I'm not sure there's an upper limit of how many you can have connected at once. But yeah, if you want all three, um, you know, I usually use. I just use the Apple remote, but I'll, I, I keep the the app on standby because sometimes it's handy, um, especially if you have to type stuff, right? So, and then also, um, the, here's a little recommendation I make in the book. Uh, this keyboard, this 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 isn't the Apple keyboard. You might notice this is a Logitech. It's the K760. See this big solar panel up here? Needs you need, Oh, hey, <laughs> you hey, mean, you, you mean this one, Josh? Uh, yes. <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, keyboard do, brothers, do it, doing keyboards. <laughs> All right. So, as you know, Chuck, and just for the listeners out there, one of the cool things about this keyboard, other than the fact that you never have to recharge the batteries, is that it supports up to three connections. Right? I wish I had this while I was setting up the Apple TV thirty times because. <laughs> yeah, because I had to borrow my only Bluetooth keyboard at the time to. Uh, to uh, set up the Apple TV, and then I was having to lean over my desk to write on my MacBook's uh, keyboard. It was quite infuriating. But anyway, so you have th you have three uh, Bluetooth connections, and you have this this right. So you have one for your Mac, and you can have one for uh, your iPad or something. Then you have the third one for the Apple TV. So I you know I get to work for the day. I can take this from the office into the living room, press a button, and I can control control the Apple TV with it. So it's pretty slick. And if you enter a lot of passwords, it's really it's a really handy thing to have. Josh, I'm embarrassed. Until you held that keyboard up, I never thought about using the third <laughs> setting as the Apple TV. What's wrong with me? That's, that's so obvious, and it's right here, and the Apple TV is right over there. So that's great. That's great. Even I missed that. That's good. That's good. Um, you know, I guess it, this is not exactly about the book, but I think it's important. There's so much speculation about what Apple will do next with the Apple TV. They've postured it as a hobby all this time. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's moving a little beyond hobby status. Mm -hmm. Do you have an opinion on whether they will bring out an actual Apple television or if they will just enhance the Apple TV set-top hockey puck? 
Well, yeah, I, of course, I follow these rumors very closely. And uh, Mark Gurman over at uh, 9to5Mac, who usually has some great sources, uh, sometimes he gets it wrong, but he's, he's more often right than wrong. It, they've been saying March for new Apple TV, which I hope isn't true because I'm, you know, I'm just about to come out with this book. <laughs> so that would only give me a month of lead time. Um, I'm really hoping for fall. Fall would be great, you know. Um, but in the in the meantime, um, anyway. So the next generation of Apple TV, I don't think it's not going to be a TV set because there's no reason to do that, right? And and furthermore, um, look, Tim Cook's supply chain guy, right? He's going to be thinking about the logistics. How many TV sets do you think you can store in a warehouse or an Apple store versus little tiny boxes about that big, right? You uh. You know, just as a logistics thing, you're going to make a lot more money selling the little high margin box than you are a uh, big TV set. So don't think they're going to do that. Don't think it makes sense for them. And I don't really think it makes sense from um, from a user standpoint either, because with the current Apple TV, you just plug in the HDMI and, and you switch it over there, and really you don't have to do anything else with it. You know, um, TV sets are basically just monitors now, and they're, and they're cheap monitors too, right? That's not a business Apple wants to get into. Um, I wrote an article about this, uh, you know, back in the fall before Apple announced you know, the iPad Air and all this stuff, and um, it was kind of based on the premise that either Apple wasn't going to do anything, anything with the Apple TV or they were going to go kind of big. And some things I predicted were, and they turned out to be totally wrong, but may, maybe they'll, they'll be right in the future. I predicted uh, Apple TV with an A7 processor and an App Store, because and. Another thing to note too is, you know, they got the official Bluetooth controllers now. So, with the A7 Bluetooth uh, controllers, it could be a nice little micro console. You, you know, these things have been pretty popular. Well, sort of pop the Ouya, which was popular in Kickstarter and wasn't so popular afterward. But there's there's clearly a market for inexpensive consoles with cheap games you can download, right? So, I think Apple is gearing up to do an App Store, and I think they've definitely been working on the tools. And please, for the love of God, Apple, you, you, we need a better way to manage all these new channels you're adding. And because I hate to bash Apple TV, but a lot of these new channels aren't very good, right? Like you turn on your TV and suddenly you have like a Korean channel that, that I can't understand. And, uh, and there's a Red Bull channel with that, that no one's ever going to watch. Like give us, give us a way to get things we want. You know, I want Amazon. I want, I want UFC. You know, I want to remove some of these things entirely. I just don't want to see them. Um, but, yeah, so I think they're working on that, but I think they've been thinking of the best way to implement that that will be effective. So what I'm thinking um, next generation Apple TV will look like A7 processor, because, hey, why not? Um, I think it will support Bluetooth game controllers, uh, probably have an app store of some kind. Um, and then, let's see, what was the, what was the other big thing? Um, oh, yes, so with the A7... Now, there's all, there's all these rumors they're building up all these new CDN networks, right? Like uh, content, you know, mirroring and, dele- and relay systems. Makes me think they might be gearing up to deliver 4K video from the iTunes store, which that would make sense, right? Because the last Apple TV update, they switched, you know, the second generation Apple TV and the third generation, practically identical. Big difference is second gen only does 720p video, right? Well, the Apple TV, the third generation Apple TV does 1080p. So I think it would make sense for a fourth generation device to do full 4K. So I think that's what we'll see. We'll see App Store, we'll see controller support, we'll see, uh, and we'll see 4K. I don't, and maybe an iOS 7 style redesign of the interface. Uh, I think it could definitely use some freshening up. I don't think it's going to be some, you know, earth shattering device. You know, I, now there is the rumor that they'll build an airport into it. Maybe they'll merge the airport express and the Apple TV. Ah, uh, you know, that, that makes some sense because they use the same casing, right? It's one of those Tim Cook supply chain things. Um, so uh, it's it's funny. Under my TV, I have an Apple TV on one side and they have the airport express on the other. So it's kind of like they're, they're yin and yang. Um, so airport built in would be cool. Make the, the next book a little more complicated, but I can see that happening. Um, but yeah, I don't, I wouldn't expect it to be earth shattering, but I think right now as popular as the Apple TV is, as much demand as there's in an app store. So that's the thing too, because you know, with the iPhone, Apple waited until there was just tons of demand. People were like, oh, we want apps, we want apps for our thing. And like, Oh, here's an app store. Oh my God. And it was a huge breakout hit. So I think the Apple TV could be similar. Um, 
but uh, they're, it just depends on how they do it. You know, they, they don't want an ooya, right? You know, they don't want something, you know, people calling it a joke. But I think something that could, um, you know, do any kind of video you want to download. And, uh, and apps, see, that's another thing, too, people don't think about is app store review process. You know, if they have an app store, they're going to they're gonna want to review these apps. Um, you know, the Roku has all the, anyone can program for, for a Roku, add a, a channel, you know, what have you. Some of them aren't very stable. Uh, sometimes you download them and it, it'll crash your entire box. Apple does not want that. You know, they, they, they want something that's quality, especially in a TV, right? You don't want your TV crashing. So there's a lot of things they'll have to gear up for for an app store. They have to make sure they implement it right. And if they're going to do 4K video, that's going to mean a lot more bandwidth. And that's something, of course, historically Apple's had trouble with. I want to throw a possibility out to you that I think would be one of my favorite additions. It would mm-hmm. now it would be more money, but and, and I get that. But I just got to believe that somewhere along the line, the Apple TV is going to be part of a wireless surround sound system. You were talking mm-hmm. about the setup for the receivers, mm-hmm. and that that means that first of all, you've got to invest a, a substantial amount of money in a receiver. Mm-hmm. Then you got to connect it. Then you got to wire it. And I know wireless is getting better all the time, but mm-hmm. it's not there. I would think that it'd be a, a relatively simple matter for Apple to either partner with someone or develop their mm-hmm. own decent subwoofer, decent satellites, mm-hmm. decent uh, center channel and front channel, or or maybe some unit like the uh, the Sonos Play Bar, mm-hmm. and. All of a sudden, you've got a much more immersive experience. I, I agree, 4K is coming, but I think that would be something that would greatly enhance the video experience for so many people relatively easily. Now, how expensively mm-hmm. is another matter, but relatively easily. And it would be the perfect thing to do because you've already got AirPlay, you've already got wireless technologies that they're very familiar with and very successful with. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, yeah, it'd, it'd be uh, the new version of the iPod Hi Fi, right? <laughs> Well, but the, no, no, a good one, a, a good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, hear, I heard it was good. I, I never tried it though, um, so I, I, I can't afford those kind of things. So at least not at the time. So, um, yeah, I agree it completely. As a matter of fact, um, on my ye old blog that I haven't updated in forever, one of my one of my first posts there, one of my first speculative posts there was about the Apple TV, and there I said, if they do a set, you know, if they were to do a set, it wouldn't be so much about Video, because video is a solved problem. You know, even 4K. 4K will be a solved problem very soon, right? Um, that's just a matter of supply chain, getting the technology out there. The um, the big thing will be um, is audio, because audio is what makes it so complicated, right? Because the speakers you put into a TV sound, they put in the TV sound horrible, partially because the TV is so thin, and also because they skimp on, on that part. Um, you know, sound bars are kind of a halfway solution, right? Um, but, you know, so if you if you really want the best audio quality, you go with the receiver, and that brings a whole new level of complexity. You know, what you could get out of a set is you could get, like, you get the speakers built in, plus you have a couple, you know, of uh, AirPlay surround sound speakers, right? Um, you can just put on your wall. But... Now I'm thinking you don't necessarily have to have a set to do something like that. Yeah, you could have a speaker set or, you know, you could expand the AirPlay output to support 5.1, 7.1. I would love to have surround sound in my living room again. It would be nice, but I don't want to deal with the wires. Um, we have a hardwood floor. I have I, there's nothing to tuck, on, tuck it under. I would have to, you know, and living rooms aren't set up to run wires across and have them out of sight. It's going to look like Spider-Man slipped over in there. So... Um, You've been to my living room, Josh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've had that living room. I've, I have done that many times. Well, it's funny. The system I have now is a 5.1 system. I've had it for years. I use 2.1 of it because uh, the center channel I have no no use for. The surround channels I don't want to set up. So it's just left, right, and subwoofer. For me, that's the best setup. And I, I think actually for a lot of people, that's the best setup. But you know, sometimes I do miss the, the surround effect. That's something that Apple could crack. And crack easily. And crack mm-hmm. easily, and if they could make it, I, I guess you get into this question of you know do you do you need to do a, a, a better and best solution or you just need to do one solution? Knowing mm-hmm. Apple, I think they prefer to just do one. Um, I and because I've I've gone to a play bar system, a uh, Sonos mm-hmm. play bar system, no subwoofer yet, and it makes a huge difference in the experience. As we tape this, I, I watched the uh, the Olympic Games opening, and just. You feel immersed 
and not because of the video, but because of the audio. It, it's, you know, it's surrounding you. It feels like you are there. Mm-hmm. And that just makes a huge difference. And it's one I'm kind of surprised that Apple hasn't, hasn't gone that direction. Yeah, they support it, but they support it by getting out and letting you work with other hardware. Yeah, and, uh, well, you know, I think it's one of those things that they're not sure if it's worth the focus on, right? You know, because their last four way in the speakers, kind of a kind of a flop, kind of a dud. People laughed at it. So I, I think they're a little hesitant to do something like that. You know, and may, that may be something an A7 and an Apple TV could open up, because instead of just out playing to one AirPlay speaker at a time, maybe with all the extra processing power, you could output to five, you know, five, six, seven, eight speakers at once, um, you know, throw a subwoofer in there too. And, and they might partner with people like Sonos or, um, I don't know, Belkin, um, various speaker, Sony, yeah, yeah, so, you know, we, we all know how much Apple and Sony love each other. So, uh, so we could, um, yeah, you know, I could definitely see them partnering with something and adding the capability. And, you know, I mean, how well would that work? I don't know. It depends on how much Apple cares, right? Because if Apple really cared about it, it could be amazing. If Apple's just kind of, like with the the current state of the MFI game controllers and iOS, the Apple doesn't care that much. Like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's, that's a neat idea. I will let someone else handle it. And, <laughs> and they're kind of not so great and very expensive. So, I, you know, I, I could see that going either way, right? Um, it could be huge, but is there the market there, right? Because Apple needs the big growth, right? Carl Icahn and all these shareholders, they want the big growth. I oh, want more, more money. You're not making enough money. So uh, I think anything they look at, they're going to be looking at a multi-billion dollar market. I'm not sure speakers are, are where it's at. Yeah, you make a good point. You make a good point. Um, it's just, I guess it's because it's something I would like to see. But Me too. Your point about the A7 chip, you know, being able theoretically to drive maybe more than one one AirPlay speaker at a time, mm-hmm. uh, that's a great one. That's that's something else. Assuming it goes that direction, I hadn't thought about it. Mm-hmm. So, in in essence, it sounds like the Apple TV book is is for everyone. And I say that as someone who watched it in the first generation as it was published in Tidbits, mm-hmm. I I learned things, and I learned things that I, I was kind of embarrassed that I hadn't known, but I just hadn't taken the time to go looking for it, or yeah. it was there and it didn't meet my use case at when I first got it, so therefore mm-hmm. I never went back. Yeah. Um, so I. I Tell everybody, you know, I bet that you're going to learn some things from this book uh, that you didn't know, and it's going to enhance your use of your Apple TV or your Apple TVs. And it's an idea book, you know, more than anything. You know, some of the chapters, you know, like, for instance, like the the last chapter about various hacks you can do with it and the AirPlay chapter and the gaming chapter. You know, it's it's less about what I tell you specifically and more about giving you ideas about what you can do with your own with your Apple TV. Because once you get the basics down of AirPlay and and, uh, and all the different things you can do, it opens up a whole world. Right. And you'll think about the Apple TV in ways you never did before. Um you know, it took me a while to get, get wrap my head around that. But once you do, it's it's a life changer. It's crazy. But yeah, and it's it's a book for everybody. Um, if you don't have an Apple TV, you know, I, I tell you why you should get one, and I help you set it up. Um, if you're if you just got like an Apple TV for someone for Christmas and they need help setting it up, it walks you through that. You need to know more, but you want to know more about your remote control, or you want to teach somebody. Oh yeah, that's another thing too. There's a cheat sheet that comes with the book. It's uh, you know we have a teach this book thing we do now with some of our take control titles. So if uh, your mom, your wife, or your husband, you know whoever you know they need a little help with the Apple TV, you just print this thing out, hand it to them. You know, leave it by the remote, leave it by the TV. You can write your own notes on the back of it, and uh, yeah, it tells you all the key, all the remote shortcuts and how to do AirPlay and all these handy things. So the core of the book is right there in one page. Another thing about this book, too, is uh, I, I wrote it for people who don't like to read, right? Because if you're buying an Apple TV book, eh, you know, maybe, maybe you're a big reader, but, you know, but, you know maybe not, right? So I, I wrote it for people with short attention spans. And, and the Take Control books are kind of famous for that anyway, right? Like we really break things out and do bullet points and stuff. We've done it even more with this book. Uh, and it has more pictures than any other Take Control book ever. Like the the current draft is like uh, like 200 megabytes because there's so many screenshots. In it. We'll shrink it down a lot. Don't worry. When you buy the book, it won't be nearly that big. But just enormous in terms of screenshots. And we've we've really broken stuff out. It's the kind of book you can pick up for five minutes, browse through, and and learn something you didn't know before, and enjoy your TV, uh, your audio listening experience, your gaming experience more than you would have before. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I love the Take Control books. I, I say this every single time because of, of all the value adds. And the Teach the Take Control book is something we don't talk nearly enough about. Mm-hmm. The idea that, you know, you do just do that little extra thing so that somebody can do it. I do have to tell you, though, about one use case that I have for the Apple TVs. Mm-hmm. When we moved to our new office, we put two TV screens to in, in, mm-hmm. in our boardroom. And I lobbied and got two Apple TVs, one on each screen. So while somebody is doing a presentation on the main screen, mm-hmm. if, if something comes up, I can use my iPhone, open it, and I'm iPhone, folks, not iPad, iPhone, mm-hmm. open up the browser, project it up to the other Apple TV, and be doing, you know, live updates, looking up whatever is needed or referencing mm-hmm. whatever. And, you know, people come in constantly. It's like, how do you do that? How do you do that? Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's easy. It's right here, you know. Oh, you don't yeah. have an iPhone? Well, I'm sorry. That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's great for stuff like that. And and a lot of people are using it for uh, enterprise applications now. Like, I, I know uh, Stephen Hackett, uh, if you're familiar with him, he, uh, he like, there's a big uh, project he had where he wired up his entire office with all these Apple TVs they use for presentations and office displays and stuff like that. It's great for that. Oh, yeah. Another thing I talk about in the business education chapter, there's actually a what's called a conference room mode. You're probably familiar with this, Chuck, but it, it shows instructions on the screen to tell you how to uh, airplay stuff to the Apple TV. So, you, you know, people walk in the conference room, you know, let's say you have like 50 Apple TVs in your building, right? And people look on the network like, oh, I don't, I don't know what the airplay is too. Oh, well, it shows you right on the screen. Like, th- it's this Apple TV, and, and here's how you airplay to it. Very handy little feature. But yeah, there the, the remain like anything, like, it, it really, I mean, we really think about the Apple TV is that. It's, it's a box you plug in your TV, and you can send anything to it. I mean, anything from, from you know, an Apple device. And that's, that's amazing. That, that's such an amazing device. Like, do you realize how much people will pay for that sort of thing? You know, in the past, and and now here here it is. Like, oh, you you have a presentation. You want to show some pictures of your kids. Um, oh yeah, yeah. That's another thing. I totally forgot to mention the the photos and home home movies chapter. Right. So, it's amazing for that. Like, um, I actually go through. Well, my favorite th- one of my favorite things about the Apple TV is the screensaver because they have. 20, 30 different kinds of screensavers um, that you can put your photos into from Flickr or from an iPhoto library or just from your hard drive, and you can load those in the Apple TV, and and it'll just show them any way you want. I go through, I explain every single screensaver option, which if you've ever seen all the screensaver options in the Apple TV, that took me a while. So, And they don't explain what they do either, right? And so instead of having to go through one by one, um, I tell you what to use. And also... um, you know, some of them are better for like smaller pictures, like something you take with an iPhone. Some are, you know, some are more meant for like an SLR. You know, I tell you how to make your pictures look the best on those screensavers. But yeah, we, we load ours up with baby pictures. You know, like we got the, the, the kid, the kids, uh, just about six months old. We have tons of baby pictures. So yeah, we just we load it with that. And, and and a lot of times we will just sit around and watch the screensaver, right? Like. um and, and we go, oh, I remember that? Oh, he's so cute right there. And and this is like we'll be having a party, and people will be sitting around watching the Apple TV screensaver. That's how that's how awesome the Apple TV screensaver is. But yeah, it's um, what's really awesome about it is you can take a you can take a home movie on your iPhone, and then you can airplay that to the Apple TV. I mean, how, how amazing is that? Um, I mean. Even with like a camcorder, you know, you had to eject the tape and slap it in your VCR. I mean, you can literally, from the camera, wirelessly play it on your TV and watch it right there as soon as you take it. You can do the same thing with photos, um, you know, because who doesn't love a good vacation slideshow, right? But you can you can load up a, a photo album and you can show the whole thing on your Apple TV. Um, you, you know, after my wife and I got married, we had a little party and we showed some of the... Uh, we showed some of the uh, pictures, you know, on, on the Apple TV. Uh, we showed some engagement pictures and stuff. You know, it, it's amazing. I mean, for inter- and for it's uh, amazing entertainment device. It's also an amazing party device, right? It's you know to actually entertain guests with because you got the music, you got photos you can put up there. Uh, even games, like some of the games I mentioned, are party games, right? Um, like there's one that's it's kind of like win lose or draw. And it's designed for the Apple TV, so. Um, if you entertain a lot, the Apple TV is a great device to get. Um, you know, sometimes uh, we'll sit around and we'll we'll share funny YouTube videos with each other. And sorry, I'm on a total tangent here, but so, sometimes uh, we'll 
we'll, we, we'll, you know, we want to show funny YouTube videos to each other. Um, like for instance, I, you remember the Harlem shake when people will do that, that whole, th- you know, like the music stops and some, some weird stuff happens. So we were looking at all those Harlem shake videos. And, and so instead of having to search on the TV, we just pull, we'd pull up our favorite videos on the iPhone, uh, airplay it to the Apple TV. Um, so it, yeah, it's a great party device, and yeah, it's it's great for baby fo- photos and for uh, watching home movies and all that sort of thing. Can't totally, I can't believe I totally forgot about that up front. Yeah, but well, great some, use for the device. Well, there's something else you've forgotten about, and that's uh, this little thing called podcasts. Oh yeah, so yeah, <laughs> they do do podcasts. We it, there's a podcast app built in. To be honest, though, usually I will just uh, list, I'll listen to podcasts on my iPhone or my Mac, and I'll airplay them to the Apple TV. The podcast app is okay. What I like it for is video podcasts, right? So, like, you can load up stuff like Mac Voices or, you know, it, like it, you know, Rachel Maddow or something, or, like, you know, those, those HD video podcasts you don't necessarily want in your iPhone all the time, and you can pull up from there. It's just like watching TV. Um but for you know me personally, uh, yeah, I, I usually just listen to audio and I'll beam it to the Apple TV. And I don't even, I, you know, I, if I forgot about it, it's because I don't think about it, right? Because once you get the Apple TV and you start airplaying audio to it all the time, you don't even think about it. You're like, uh-huh, okay, I like that song. Hey, I want to listen to this song, and you click a button, you don't even think about it anymore. It just it just happens. Um, yeah, you know, it's a miracle of modern technology. So, folks, you need to check it out because you could be watching Josh in fifty two inches wide. You know. I don't recommend that, but it's <laughs> it's entirely possible, and and my book will help you figure out how to do it. Josh, I, I have to tell you one other one other quick story about the Apple TV. A friend of mine called; they were redoing their conference room, and said, "You know, hey, I want to get your opinion on this." Uh, and I'm not going to say the manufacturer, but this you know video conference system that they have this video system that we'll be able to take and put our our PCs up on the on the screen and all and. And so I, I went, and they only wanted seven thousand dollars. No, is it is that all? Not including the screens, not oh. including the screens. I'll so, take five. Oh. Yeah. So I said, well, you know, there's another option. So I went back a second day and took an Apple TV and hooked it up to an existing screen, and you know, then of course they have PCs, they don't have Macs. Yeah. So there's this little app called Air Parrot that I'm sure oh, yeah. you're familiar with. Yeah, we cover that in the book. Yeah, that will take and and run on a PC and project a mm-hmm. screen up, and so. You know, got finished doing it, and I said, "Okay, so if you want to spend seven thousand dollars plus screens, that's fine." Or <laughs> an Apple TV is a hundred bucks, and I think AirParrots. I don't hold me to it, folks, but I think it's like ten or twelve bucks, maybe yeah, not, it's not that expensive. much. Expensive, yeah. So you tell me what you would rather do, <laughs> and of course, uh, the people at the office supply place were not happy when they canceled the order for the other. But you know, and it's like, what? What you? People are trying to sell you this stuff, and it's so much easier. We're all doing it, and now you can do it from your iPhone. Yeah, and and so they're calling me and saying, "Hey, this is great. You know, this is ha- this is what we we're doing, and we saved all this money." Yeah, you know, and I I swear, Josh, I'm going to tell them to go buy your book because I bet they'll find more stuff that they can do sure. with it. Absolutely, and and one of the things I'm hoping to hear from readers of the book is more ways they use the Apple TV and and uh, you know like. Pfft, problems they have that they want to hear about how the Apple TV could solve. Because, I, I, you know, this is something I'm fascinated to learn about. I want to keep, you know, and one of the reasons I want to stream the book is because I love hearing people's use cases. I love hearing people use it for things like that because it's, it, you know, it's funny. I, I, I like to say, you know, a lot of people try to say the iPad is a, is a content consumption device. Well, you know, the, the only consumption device Apple makes is the Apple TV, right? You can, you can create content on the iPhone. No one ever argues that. Yeah, I create content on the iPhone all the time, right? Emails, tw- tweets, you know, uh, edit photos, take photos. Um, the Apple TV is really the only content consumption device. But even then, even then, Apple, one of the things I love about Apple and re- reasons I use their products is because they always inspire creativity. And even with the Apple TV, which which is just like supposedly a couch potato device, a hobby for them, it still inspires, thanks to AirPlay, inspires so much creativity. You know, like the, the, you don't see p- people doing this kind of stuff with a Chromecast. You don't see people doing this kind of stuff with a Roku or a PlayStation. You know, only the Apple TV is that flexible and lets you do so many different things with it. And and in some cases, save a lot of money on enterprise equipment, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. I got to let you go. But before we do, give us the specifics of the book, how much and where, as if they didn't know and all that. 
uh, you go to takecontrolbooks.com, or, uh, of course, we'll also announce it on tidbits.com. And you can also follow me at jcenters, J-C-E-N-T-E-R-S, on Twitter, and you better believe I'm going to be yammering about the book for long after it's published. So, you know, if you miss any of those links, just follow me, and you'll get, you know, 10 or 12 every day for the next year. <laughs> <laughs> and the cost is about 15 bucks. Should be, yeah, I'm thinking 50, well, we're thinking $15, which is a great deal because it's it's one of our larger books, so you're getting a, you're getting a lot of meat for your money. Great. Josh, it's great to see you. I'm looking forward. Uh, you'll be back again here in the not-too-distant future to talk about your Macworld, uh, iWorld session, but I'm looking forward to shaking hands in person and maybe hearing what the latest Apple TV adventures are. <laughs> It'll be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it, Chuck. Same here. Same here. Good to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me back on. Folks, this is Mac Voices, the Talk to Mac community. I'm Chuck Joyner. We will be back again soon. Before we go, though, be sure to check out our show notes. Uh, I'll have links to all of Josh's stuff. I'll have links to everything, all the utilities we talked about, the, the programs. Um, I think you'll find them all useful. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, app.net, Google+, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date with all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Advertising and sponsorships handled by BackBeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Backbeat.